everybody, this is Dream, and today we have a 7-game Major League Baseball slate for you. Before I get started, can you guys smash that like and subscribe button? Also, thank you guys to the members for uh, joining on YouTube. I really do appreciate it a lot. You can check that in the link in the description below. Uh, let's go ahead and get in the slate here. So we have some good pitching today. we got a lot of choices on the slate. Uh, Garrett Cole being the top one. Uh, obviously, he's with the Yankees, and he's facing Toronto. He's going to be hard to roster today at this price point, as he's significantly more expensive than everybody else. He does have big upside in this game, uh, though this isn't the best matchup, but pitchers do have tendency to have big games against Toronto lately. Uh, but he's kind of, they are kind of up and down, so I do think he's a viable option today, but he's high risk, high reward on this slate being at his price. Um, then we'll look at Marcus Freed, or sorry, Max Freed for uh, Atlanta. Now, Atlanta's got a good matchup here against Washington, which gives him a lot of upside. He's been really inconsistent with only two games over 20 fans and wins the past seven. Though he's had four wins in that stretch, and he has big-time upside. He is capable of big games. As you can see, his record is also 7-1. and one. Uh, His strikeout rate has been somewhat inconsistent, which is hurting his fantasy point output. But, but he is a capable pitcher in this situation. But he is high-risk, high-reward, as he is the second-most expensive play on the slate. Then we'll look at Scooball for Detroit. He's probably one of the best options on the slate. In a great matchup, he's been over 20 fantasy points in five of the last six. Well, his random bad games tend to sting really bad. He has been, he has had nice upside lately, and he's a decent price here. He's faced Oakland three times in the past two years, and he's been over 20 fantasy points in all of them, including a 20 fantasy point game earlier this year. His strikeout rate is pretty inconsistent, but it's also decent, so I think he's capable of a big game here. If he can get six or seven strikeouts, he's definitely going to be a top-tier play on the slate. Uh, then we'll look at Barrios for Toronto. Now, he is facing the Yankees. He's kind of been robust as a result. But the Yankees are a mess right now, and they have the, they have the capability of hitting home runs. That said, he's had three straight games over 20 fantasy points, and he's capable of a big game here. But he's high risk, high reward, as the team he's playing does have some upside. Then we'll look at Grayson Rodriguez for Baltimore. Now, he is facing Cleveland today. A 15 to 25 fantasy point game is probably where he will end up. Cleveland has a few bats that I like, but, he, but he's uh, li limited his earned runs for the most part. Though Cleveland does, doesn't strike out very much, which is a concern here because he doesn't need to get a lot of strikeouts to pay off here. But he is capable of a good game even without a, t a ton of strikeouts in this particular matchup. Though there are a couple of Cleveland bats that I do think are interesting. Ranger Suarez for the Philly is a boomer bust play. His floor is really bad, but he does tend to get some quality starts. It's just a matter of getting strikeouts and avoiding home runs. Still a tough matchup here, but he is capable in this matchup. He's kind of a Hail Mary play at this pretty expensive price for a Hail Mary option. Uh, then we'll look at Kyle Hendricks for the Cubs. He's another guy who will likely score in the 15 to 20 fantasy point range. He's cheap enough to consider in a good matchup, but he's also got a lot of ugly starts, and his K rate is suspect. But he is a contrarian play on the slate, so he's viable, but he's risky. Um, moving into our catchers here, we're going to start with Will Smith. Now, I do like Will Smith quite a bit today, though he has been very inconsistent lately. He's been kind of slumpy. He's capable of a big game if he can hit a home run, but he has not been doing much lately. He's had a couple games that were good, but for the most part, he's not scoring a ton of fantasy points, so he's high risk, high reward. Uh, I also like Francisco Alvarez a lot today for the Cub for the uh, Mets. Now, he does face a somewhat tough matchup, but he's hitting the ball fairly well with a 250 average over the last 10 games, and he does have some nice home run metrics here. He's also had a couple of really good hitting games where he's had doubles and stuff, which have really boosted his fantasy potential. Uh, but he is kind of up and down, so he is inconsistent, but he has been pretty good lately. Uh, he does draw that home run upside today. Matt Olson is in play for Atlanta at first base. He has hit the ball very well throughout the season. He's got lots of home run potential today. He's uh, been able to score good fantasy points even without home runs sometimes, uh, but he does need to hit one at this extreme price. But he's definitely capable in this matchup and has a great opportunity. Uh, then we'll look at Pete Alonzo. Let's see. Uh, for the Mets. Now, I really do like his home run potential today, but he is somewhat boomer bust as his batting average has really fallen off, um, and he does face a tougher matchup. He's also striking out too much, uh, but he is capable of a big game here, and so he's kind of a home runner best play on the slate. And then Josh Naylor uh, for Cleveland is in play today as he's been hitting the ball extremely well lately for Cleveland. He's averaging uh, 375 over the last 10 games. He's been good all year. He does draw some good home run upside as well, but he doesn't need it to pay off. It's especially at this price point. He's a really solid option on the slate. Uh, maybe in second base, we'll look at Mookie Betts. Now, he and uh, Ozzy Albies are both in play today. Uh, Mookie has been inconsistent recently, coming back from some injury situations. But Ozzy uh, looks like a great option on the slate as he's got a nice plus matchup here. He's hitting the ball very well. 
uh, with a 318 average over the last 10 games, a couple home runs included. But he's had a lot of multi-hit games, so he's really he's just really playing well, and it's hard to ignore how good he's playing, though his price is extremely high. Uh, Ahmad Rosario also in play for the Dodgers. Now he's 3,700 bucks. He's been somewhat cons inconsistent throughout the year, but he's got some big games for the Dodgers occasionally, and he's been fairly capable of good games. He also has multi-hit potential, and even if he doesn't, uh, uh, even if he does not get multi-hits, he's still capable of getting on base and doing some stuff. So he's a capable player on the slate, and he's nice and cheap, which gives him some upside. Uh, moving to third base, we'll look at Jose Ramirez. Um, oops, oh crap! What happened? Sorry about that, guys. Um, let me fix this. All right. So Jose Ramirez is in play today at third base. Um, not sure what happened there uh, for Cleveland. Now he does draw some good metrics here and has some nice upside. Um, he's hit the ball very well the last ten games, and that gives him a lot of utility. But he is high risk, high reward at his price point because he does need to hit on run. And he hasn't been hitting them all that successful throughout the season. He's had 24 on the year, but uh, he is capable of it. But he has been somewhat inconsistent from that perspective. He seems to get them in bunches. So uh, then we'll look at uh, Alec Boom, who is a core play for me for he Philly. He seems like a great option at this price point. He's in the ball very well. He doesn't need a home run to pay off. He's had some multi-hit games that have really p helped him uh, pay off as well. Uh, and he doesn't strike out a ton, which definitely gives an advantage here. So I really like his potential on the slate. Uh, we'll also look at Gunnar Henderson, though, as another option. He's a little bit cheaper than Jose Ramirez, and he has as much upside as he does. He's also hitting the ball very well, averaging almost 12 fantasy points a game over the last 10. So I do dry, I do like his potential on the slate. Uh, Trey Turner in play for Philly today. Uh, he has been somewhat inconsistent throughout the season, but right now he's hitting the ball pretty well with a 300 average. I really like his potential. I really like Philly a lot today, and he's definitely a capable option, though he does need to hit him run to pay off as he's a bit high priced today. Ahmad Rosario and Gunnar Henderson could also play here at shortstop. Um, maybe in the outfielders, we'll look at Acuna, who is Ronald Acuna. He's one of the best players in baseball, hitting home runs, stealing bases, everything. He's 381 average over the last 10 games. He's got monster upside. Obviously, if he doesn't hit a home run, that really limits his upside but uh, to some degree, but he does have stolen base potential as well. Uh, with his price being so high, though, it is kind of imperative. Uh, Mookie Betts also in play here at this position too. Uh, Nick Castellanos is in play as a core play for me. Again, I really like Philly today. He's had five home runs over the last 10 games, and he's hitting the ball very well with a 289 average in that stretch. He's managed to score fantasy points in bunches, even without the uh, home runs. He's scoring enough to pay off here at this price point, so I think he's a great option. Michael Harris also in play uh, for the Braves, as he's hit the ball very well recently. Um, he's got the home runs are starting to fly now, and he does have stolen base potential as well. He's been pretty solid so far uh, throughout the season. You know, he's been up and down, but he has some potential for good games. And he's had a lot of multi-hit games recently, which give him some upside here as well. Um, then we'll look at Ruiz for um, Oakland. Now, he's kind of a stolen base or bust kind of guy. He's had five stolen bases in the last ten games, and anytime he gets a stolen base, he's usually going to pay off. He just has to get on base to do it. And it's two games against Detroit this season. He's had a couple, so he's capable of that. But he's been good throughout the year with stolen bases as he's got 60 on the season. And he's definitely capable of scoring 10 fantasy points and paying off for us at this price point. Uh, Stephen Kwan also in play uh, for the Cleveland Indians. Or sorry, the Guardians, whatever they're called. Uh, anyhow, for the last 10 games, he's in the ball very well. Uh, he also has some stolen base upside. He's not a huge home run threat, but he is capable of a big game with the multi-hits, and he doesn't need a home run to pay off. He's been scoring the ball, sh hitting the ball pretty well recently, which gives him some nice utility here. Uh, Jock Peterson also in play as kind of a little bit underpriced guy, kind of a contrarian option here for San Francisco. Uh, he hasn't uh, been quite as good as I had hoped he would be this season, but he is hitting home run potential uh, in this game, and so he does draw good metrics here, and he's been hitting the ball pretty well recently. So with that said, guys, thank you for liking, coming, subscribing. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below, and have a nice day, guys.